As an Amnesty International researcher, it has been overwhelming to analyze crackdowns on peaceful protests by authorities in Sri Lanka and across South Asia. This year was a year of earthquakes starting from Syria and Turkey, then later Libya, but perhaps the biggest earthquake of all was what we've been witnessing in Gaza. <laughs> Together with my colleagues, we have documented numerous human rights violations against civilians, including mass casualties, torture, rape, extrajudicial executions, and the suppression of freedom of expression. Here in Europe, it was one of the most dramatic year for migrants and refugees' rights. My team and I documented one of the most deadly tragedies ever happened in the Mediterranean. There has been an incredible backlash against gender rights. And nowhere is that more clear in the United States than the example of the attacks on abortion rights. It was the deadliest year for protesters in Senegal. We met with the families of those who were killed, who shared with us the heartbreaking stories of grief and loss. There remained no accountability for the thousands upon thousands of people killed in the war on drugs in the Philippines. I was in Ukraine at the time. We had to respond the way we can. So I was conducting dozens and dozens of interviews with people who were stuck there. As an advocacy advisor, my role has been convince policymakers that people and our rights should be the absolute priority and be reflected in the final text of the world's first binding law on artificial intelligence. So while 2023 had indeed been a challenging year for human rights, it was also a time when we were able to show the world the veritable power of our collective action. Some of our evidence can be used to push for arms embargo, to push for accountability and justice. To ensure civilians are better protected and to ensure that those who are responsible for crimes and conflicts across the world are brought to justice. For example, we were able to convince the Human Rights Council to investigate the ongoing violations in Sudan and preserve evidence for future accountability purposes. We need people to support our actions to make sure that we can put pressure on authorities, government, and to ensure that they comply with their international obligations. Amnesty International is committed to empower racialized people who have been harmed by migration policies and ensure that their voices are heard. My hope uh, for the future is that people will support us to continue to hold public authorities and corporations accountable. We must continue to protect those who speak truth to power. Because we know that we can build a future of human rights. And we know that together we can win.